It's time now for the best high school sports action from the WBCB Sports Network. Catch the best games from Bucks and Mercer County at WBCBSports.com and our Facebook page. Your home for high school sports is right here at WBCB 1490. From Coach Mike Perone Field on the campus of Notre Dame High School, it's the latest edition of New Jersey High School Boys Soccer here on the WBCB Sports Network alongside Rich Fisher. I'm Andrew Myers for an exciting Colonial Valley Conference matchup today on a crisp fall afternoon here in Lawrence, New Jersey. Fish, these two teams know a lot about each other, Steiner and Notre Dame. Big tilt here towards the end of the regular season with the CBC tournament coming up and, of course, the state tournament in a couple weeks. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this matchup? Oh, I'm looking for a great matchup. First of all, you got three, I mean, Listen, you drive in here, there's 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 bales of hay with pumpkins on it. <laughs> there's a chill in the air. The leaves are starting to change, uh, you know, and it's a soccer game. It's it's autumn. It's we're we're in autumn and uh, <clears throat> we got an always good game between two of the county's premier programs. And there's a lot riding on it for both teams as they're still playing for seeding in the upcoming Colonial Valley Conference Tournament, which begins uh, Saturday and then the quarterfinals are Friday, Monday um, and there's even more riding on it for Steiner perhaps. Steiner is one point behind Robbinsville in the Colonial Division and if they can win and Hopewell can upset Robbinsville the Spartans win the crown. If uh, Steiner wins and Robbinsville ties they tie for the title or if Steiner ties and Robbinsville loses they tie for the championship but that's a lot of what ifs and Steiner just wants to win and sort of get itself going in the right direction again. They've lost two out of three, and the Irish have won three out of four. Uh, both teams outstanding defensively. Steinert's allowed just eight goals this year. Notre Dame's given up 14, but in their 12 wins, they've allowed just three goals, and they have nine shutouts. Steinert's got seven shutouts, and they've only allowed more than one goal just once this year, a 2-2 tie with Cherry Hill East. So... When you think of good defenses, you immediately think of the goalkeepers, and both teams have good ones. Uh, Steiner Stennis Tchaikovsky is very good. He's made the great save when he's had to. Notre Dame's going with a sophomore, Anthony Merluse, for the most part. He's been solid throughout the campaign. But when you when teams are this good defensively, it's not just because your goalie is good or your back four or three are good. You know, the entire team defends. It's not. It's the midfielders and the forwards coming back. And you can see a lot of that with these two teams. The one big difference is offensively. Notre Dame has scored 69 goals this year, which is more than double Steinert's output. And Irish senior midfielder Will Lynch has 22 goals. That's just four less than Steinert's entire team, entire total of 26. Chris Vega leads him in scoring with five goals. Three other guys have four. In contrast with that, uh, besides Lynch, three other Irish players have seven or eight goals. So what that means is Steiner's had a lot of experience in close games, and they play to get a lot of games in pressure situations. Aside from a 6 nothing win, their largest margin of victory is two goals. Notre Dame's won 11 times by three or more goals, and a lot of times by five or more. So I would look for the Spartans to try to slow down the Irish offensive buzzsaw, you know, they'll try to mark Will Lynch, but a lot of teams do that. Uh, I'm not saying Steiner won't attack, but it may have all it can handle trying to contain the Irish. One of the Stein, one of Steiner's big advantages is there's two big there's big defensive wall in the back, Elliot Morris, Jacob Riley, and Ryan Tchaikovsky. Those guys are big and tough, um, so that could make it a little tough for Lynch. But, you know, I think Steiner's going to want to try to just keep this close, keep it a scoreless game, try to sneak in a goal and defend, and... Um, you know, see what happens there. I'd be shocked if we don't have a great game, and I'd really be shocked if this doesn't go into overtime, considering the last three Steiner games I've done have all gone into overtime. So, settle in, everybody. Make a cup of hot chocolate, maybe some tea, and uh, settle in for a long game and uh, probably a good game. Yeah, and discussing the ties, too, last time these two teams met was last October, and that was nearly a tie, went into overtime, and then a one nothing win for the Spartans. An OT goal from uh, Liam Gardner in that one to lift the Spartans over the Irish. It's a close contest between these uh, two teams over the last couple of years. Three of the last five games going Steinert's way, and three of those games ended in shutouts, so 
you know, these two teams talked about their defensive records and even against each other in the recent history of this matchup have been throwing up goose eggs for the opposition defensively. So should be a very tight battle and a very good one at that too as these two teams round out their regular season. Fish mentioned the inaugural CVC tournament will be kicking yeah. off this weekend. Yep, no Mercer County tournament. The prep schools are not playing in the Mercer County tournament this year. So it is just the CVC teams and uh, I don't know. A lot of people aren't happy about that, but that's what it is. And uh, the, I guess there's the prelim games are Saturday, and then the quarterfinals are Monday. And I forget what the schedule is from that point. But uh, yeah, it'll still be a good tournament. Looking forward to it. And we have, uh, you know, like you said, these two teams always play close, tight games. So <coughs> it should not be any different today. We're underway. Notre Dame, the home team, wearing their home navy jerseys with the light blue piping on the front steiner with the road whites and their green lettering and wording of the steiner across the chest notre dame starts out with the ball first will lynch is number 11 he actually leads the entire area in scoring 22 goals for the senior yeah. and lynch. He's, he's really been on a, a tear the last couple of weeks he has a goal contribution in every game. Goals in 12 of 14, or excuse me, 14 of 16 for the Irish this year. And Steiner tries to pick Son up offensively there, and a foul shoving the back from Luigi Baricelli, and it'll be a free kick for Steiner. You talked about the CVC, but it's really been domination for the Colonial uh, Division. Uh, uh, all the good teams in the CVC really are are in the Colonial Division, the Steiner team, Notre Dame as well. Robbinsville top at the 12-0-2 record. Yep. Yeah, you got Robbinsville, Steiner, Notre Dame, and Hopewell's not bad. Uh, Princeton in there too. Princeton, yeah. The, yeah, they're only the defending state champion. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> and that's Notre Dame actually lost to Princeton, and Steiner defeated Princeton. And that was a big win for Steiner. It, Steiner is in a, a really, really tough stretch of games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it started with Robbinsville, and then they had Cherokee, which is a very good team. And uh, from Cherokee, they Then there had, was that, that Prince, Princeton win was after the right, Cherokee loss. Princeton, lost. and then Hun, yep. which is a good team, and then now Notre Dame today. So there's been no let up in the schedule for both Spartans, but that's good. Leading into the tournament, uh-oh. Here's a chance now for the Irish, maybe some hesitation. And down in the box goes Ercolino, no call. Yeah, Elliot Morris, I don't know. Looks like there might have been a little shove there, but. Some contact, but the referee keeps the whistle in his hand. And we'll play on. First opportunity for Notre Dame, though. Unable to get a shot on that, but putting some pressure on the Steiner defense. Here's Baricelli in the middle, gonna be saying his name a lot today. The senior back. Looks like he's playing a little bit in the midfield right now, Baricelli, number 15. We're carrying the captain's armband on his left forearm. Kind of windy up here where we're sitting, but I don't think it's all that windy on the field because we're up kind of up on the slope. Yeah, well, maybe get a chance to see it here on the Tchaikovsky uh, punt, see how the wind affects that. Yeah. Tchaikovsky, the senior goalkeeper for the Spartans. Uh, it did, it did curve off to it the did, left. Yeah, it took it a little bit there. The, the, the wind is at our backs, and that was the same direction that that ball went. So perhaps there is some wind on that field. I walked across the field. It didn't feel that windy, but uh. Minimal spin on that punt. It goes right out of bounds in front of the Notre Dame bench. Iris, we're going to throw in here. And a nice flick on from Honish. Well, unable to find a teammate is there to knock it back is Elliot Morris. And Steiner with just one win in their last four. We mentioned those four games, really tough opponents. They get that big win against Princeton, though, to kind of pick themselves up in this tough stretch. But a good result here on the road against Notre Dame would help them out as well. Yeah, now the loss of Robbinsville was tough. They gave up that tying goal with a minute 20, minute 21 to go. Trying to push it forward is Jacob Riley, but Defender is there. It's again Baricelli, and he forces a mistake. Notre Dame will get a throw, and they'll take it quickly. It's Lynch now in the corner. Uh, heavy touch from 
Lynch takes it out of bounds. Got a lot of bean bags here. Keep down our keep our papers from blowing away. I thought that there was a cornhole tournament when I got <laughs> up here. Well, Fish, I'll loosen up my arm if we see any boards come out. All right, buddy. You and I um, will be the team. I'm ready to go. I'm watching a lot of ESPN eat the Ocho lately. They've been showing a lot of <laughs> a lot of cornhole tournaments on there. So well, you really don't have much to do. do you? <laughs> <laughs> Battle for on the far side of the field. Notre Dame with a nice one-two play. Flinch looking for. Pericelli, but unable to get it to him. And Steiner now working it back to Tchaikovsky. Just has to flick it ahead to get rid of it. One back by the Irish, flicked on by Pericelli, but headed away. All Irish so far in the first five minutes of this one. Sure has been. Attempted cross from Isaac Bustamante. Cleared away by the Spartans, but only as far as the defender on the far side, it's a cross in, deflected off of Jacob Riley. Back out to Baricelli, maybe a chance here, and a shot goes over the bar off the right foot of Luigi Baricelli. First actual shot towards the goal. Wasn't on the goal, but. Doesn't test Tchaikovsky. Nope. Tchaikovsky with 43 saves in 12 games. We have no statistics for him from the Cherokee or Hun games. He allowed one goal in each of those games. Don't have the save stats on there, though. So eight goals allowed in 14 games for Tchaikovsky. Great defensive record for not only him, but the center back line and the Spartan team in general. Yep. Uh, one thing Steiner does well, and I've said it before, is that their midfield makes it tough for teams to get over, over the midfield. But... That hasn't been a problem today for the Irish so far. Sparrins trying to break out now as Tafro has played far to from Chris DeMarco, and that's rolled out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. Chris DeMarco and Tyler Tafro, two names we'll be mentioning a lot for the Spartans today. Yeah, those Tafros are pretty active. Tyler Tafro, four goals, two assists this year. DeMarco, a goal and six assists. Those two are really the engine for the Sparrins offense. Kind of a careless giveaway by Steiner there on the far side. Irish pushes forward. Here's Lynch. And a nice step in there from Elliot Morris as he knocks it away. But Irish will keep possession. It'll be a throw in on the far side. Step inside. A weak left-footed cross in there from Nick Angelino. Intercepted by the Spartans, and now Steiner will try to keep a consistent pocket of possession here. It's out wide. It's Jacob Riley. And he plays it forward, looking for Matt Tafro. Down in the corner, Tafro working on two defenders, but that ball rolls out of play. Yeah, it looks like this wind is <laughs> going to play a part in this game. Even the balls on the ground are kind of rolling a little quicker than I think these guys want them to. <clears throat> See if the two coaching staffs pick up on that and relay the messages to players on the field. Yeah, I don't know if it favors one team or the other. I think from what I can feel sitting here, it feels like a crosswind. You know, doesn't it feel like a wind's Yeah, it's kind of going all over the place, really. Yeah. You saw that on that Tchaikovsky punt, it went this way, and then it's her cross air. And a deflection off the bottom of the cleave for Will Lynch. Didn't get much on that one. That was a nice cross by Ears. How do you say that? Ears, Ears so went. Ecolino. Ecolino. Ecolano. Ecolano. Luca Ecolano. We've got a pair of uh, Italians yeah. on the team, Ecolano and Baricelli. I hear Baricelli and I keep thinking I want pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what the stoppage was there. The referee had a drop ball for Steiner. Sporins will try to break out from their defensive half. And a good touch there across from Vega Ramirez and now playing it up the middle is Derek Monahan, but he's taken off the ball. The Irish with it now on the near side. It's Samante switches fields. Cross in looking for Lynch on the far side at three Spartans there. And 
Again, it's the Irish trying to build something from the middle of the field. Nice one, two, three pass connection there. Still the Irish with as they poke it ahead looking for Honish. Ricochet on the clearance attempt and the ball falls into the hands of Dennis Tchaikovsky and the Spartans will try to reset. I'm watching Lynch, it doesn't really look like they, Steiner's got anybody really shadowing him when he doesn't have the ball. So there's no real strict man mark on him, but I'm sure when he gets the ball, you'll see a bunch of guys gravitate toward him. He really hasn't had the ball much. <clears throat> nice play forward for the Irish here on the near side. Ercolano now in the back heel. Plays it to the corner. Here's Palumbo. Palumbo with a cross oh. inside. It's cleared out. Looks like it's going to stay a throw in, not a corner. As it was Elliot Morris there to yeah, get his body in front. That was some nice stuff by Notre Dame there. Like you said, the back heel back out wide and then across. Just Steiner was there to defend it. Throw in from Bustamante finds Lynch. Lynch now out to the top of the box. It's taken down by Angelino. Now left footed shot on the ground. Cleared away, it was Palumbo on that shot. Oh, ball boy on the field. <laughs> Extra ball on the field on the ball boy, but he's off, able to get off in time. Bustamante now near the corner. Being defended by Tafro. Tafro goes down, a crossing off the rifle, goes all the way across and a left footed oh. shot. Goes over the bar, not sure if that was really more of a second cross back in or if he was trying to put it on goal, but regardless yeah. it goes over the net. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm not sure if that was an actual shot or not. Yeah, and the Spartan defense able to hold with the Irish really threatening here. Now Steiner trying to push it ahead. Here's Vega Ramirez. Vega Ramirez with a collision there. He goes down. Another Spartan goes down, but Vega Ramirez back up. And with the ball at his feet, he plays it back to DeMarco, who again plays it to the corner. And a good sly tackle in there to knock it away. Line Irish defender. It'll be a Spartan throw in. Vega Ramirez does some nice stuff with the ball at his feet. He Chris. can make things happen just a sophomore. Vega Ramirez, a team leading five goals this year. Ball on the goal line and it rolls out of play. It will be a corner for Steiner. As Notre Dame was unable to keep that in play. The Steiner's second corner kick, they had another one earlier, didn't they? Or was that just a throw? Yeah, I think it was just play? a throw in here in the down yeah. like four, in the near corner. Got Nick Gallagher standing in front of us. <laughs> got me all screwed up. Uh, <laughs> trusty cameraman, Nick Gallagher. <laughs> Gives us a thumbs up there. Yeah, thumbs up. In swinging corner off the right foot. It's headed away by Notre Dame. Yeah, that was... Uh, Caden O'Rourke, just a freshman. Uh, he's tall. He, he he was head and shoulders above everybody else to get that out. You got a freshman that tall. You're going to win a lot of head balls over the next four years. O'Rourke, one of two freshmen on Brian Fisher's squad. Luke Coulter, number one, the other one. Both of them have played and contributed as well. Luke Coulter, three goals, four assists this year. Oh, you love that. Caden O'Rourke, three goals, three assists for the other freshman. When you got freshmen and so freshmen, freshmen, freshmen and sophomores contributing, that's that makes you feel good. Just four seniors on this Notre Dame team too, so going to be a lot of returners next year, you would assume. Free kick now for the Spartans, about 35, 40 yards out. It's Chris DeMarco over it. Wall goes up, cross goes in, and it's headed away by Notre Dame. Chasing it now is Elliot Morris. On his back is Jace Palumbo, and it rolls out of play. It'll be a Notre Dame throw it, and they try to get the counterattack here quickly. Throw it ahead to Bustamante, knocked out of bounds. It'll be another throw. Lynch with a 1 2 to the corner, and it's cross deflected. It was Tyler Javik. Trying to cross that in, a battle of the fives is Jacob Riley for the Spartans, able to get his body in front and deflect that out of play. It'll be a corner for Notre Dame. Herculano <laughs> and Angelino discussing some strategy. They'll take it each way himself. 
Here's uh, Angelino with a left-footed cross and goes past everybody and over the bar. Yep, tried a little slickness there on that corner. It wasn't traditional corner. There was Baricelli on the far post. They were looking for him. Still neither goalie has had to make a save yet in this game. This is, this is Steinert's kind of game. <laughs> Don't score, although Steinert would kind of like to be in the attacking zone a little bit more. Yeah, the bulk <laughs> of the possession is going Notre Dame's way. Yeah. The first 15 minutes of this one. See the Irish will try to build out from the back. But you know, you see it so often, especially on these windy days where a team dominates, 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 doesn't get anything, and then a, a wind-blown ball flies into the goal for the other team. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but you just you see it so often. Keeper comes out as Vega Ramirez gives chase, and then a slip there from, I think it was O'Rourke. That ball rolls out of play, so a nice bounce for Steiner. The Spartans will get another corner kick. A pair of subs coming in for the Spartans. This looks like Monahan and is that Matt Tafro coming off. One of the players coming on, Byron Godinez. <laughs> he goes right in there in the box. Sam Narkin, the other one coming in for the Spartans. And they'll take this corner short themselves. Plays it to the goal line, and it's a left foot across, misses everything, and goes behind the net. Yeah, across to the wrong side. Another sign of fall. You see these cross-country runners running all over the place. Yeah. I had three of them run right in front of me when I was coming in the parking lot. <clears throat> Good step in front there by Zach Barton for the Spartans, but it's one back by the Irish, knocked ahead. Now back and forth as that one's cleared out of play. It'll be a Notre Dame throw-in. Notre Dame three wins in their last four games, all three of them shutout wins. Had a 4-2 loss to Central Bucks County East. Yeah, they've lost to some good teams. Four losses on the year for the Irish. They also have a big win against Garfield a couple of weeks ago. one nothing win in that one. Quite a bit of lull in the action right now. Yeah, neither team really able to keep possession for a long <laughs> period of time no. last couple minutes we expected this to be a, a defensive battle it might only be one goal could do it see this throw in right in front of Steiner bench Anthony to see in his ninth season in charge won't be seeing him getting up and animated as much as he normally does yeah. with uh, the boot on his right foot yeah some tough luck a couple of weeks ago for Anthony Tassine. Yeah, suffered that playing in a men's league game. And that came shortly after he was uh, suspended and got a red card. Well, no, actually it came before the four. red yes, card. You're right, you're right. Yeah. His comment was, so I, I, uh, it was a rainy day when he got the red card. He goes, so I was standing in the rain with a broken ankle getting a red card. <laughs> <laughs> Cross ahead, played it forward for Ercolano, and it's a little too heavy there. Tchaikovsky comes off his line to collect. This punt from the Steiner keeper will stay in bounds, or at least for a moment, as it's headed away by the Irish, and it'll be a Spartan throw in. Seems like this game's going in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Flicked ahead by Baricelli and Steiner will try to keep possession here. Back and forth it goes, and now here's DeMarco trying to turn the field, but Baricelli steps in, a nice job, and now Notre Dame will try to pick up the counter. Good spin move by Ercolano, and he gets clipped in the heel, foul called, and a free kick for the Irish right at midfield. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bustamante splits defenders and then switches fields. Played forward by Palumbo, but it's intercepted. And it rolls out of play for an Irish throw in. Sub now for Notre Dame. As Baricelli will come off. Stepping in is Antonio Mandrucci for the first time today. <laughs> Mandrucci steps right into the action there, trying to battle Elliot Morris for that header, but Morris wins out. Played forward now off the foot of Javik and knocked out of play by the Spartans. It'll be an Irish throw in. Created a flick inside there by Palumbo, able to create himself some space, and now he switches the fields to Bustamante. Bustamante, with Byron Godinez on him, tries to work the outside. Still Bustamante, left foot across, oh. it's off the head. I believe it's Will Lynch, it is. Yeah, it was, yeah. But kind of an awkward flick on there, and it goes over the bar, but another opportunity for Notre Dame. Yeah, that was nice work by Bustamante, Bustamante. Good 1v1 action and then managed to get the nice cross. Lynch just headed it over. Pair of goals and assists for Isaac Bustamante, the senior. <laughs> Heavy punt there by Tchaikovsky, one by Steiner. Nice. Pass by Vega Ramirez, out wide to Godinez. Here's Godinez with a right-footed shot, and it won't Ooh. test the keeper as it goes over the bar. Marlouse reading it all the way. Yeah, I'm glad he had it read all the way. I, was, I thought that might have had a chance to get under the crossbar from here. I was Irish way off. <laughs> Irish play quickly here, and Narkin steals it for the Spartans for a moment, but then plays it out of bounds. Throw in for Notre Dame. You see Jacob Riley barking out some instructions from the back line. Keep going, Anto. In the battle here, Elliot Morris with Mandrucci on him. Plays it back safely to Jacob Riley, who knocks it forward. Miscommunication there, though, between two Spartans in the midfield, and it's one back by the Irish. Urcolano splits two defenders. Luca Urcolano and a slide tackle, a timely one at that. Beautiful from Elliot Morris. I got to tell you, he's not afraid to go in with those heavy tackles inside the box. No, no, he's not. I, I mean, that's that's why they're so tough right in that final third. Because Absolutely. they've got some big physical guys who aren't afraid to take you on. Said Elliot Morris and Jacob Riley's name a lot today. Here's a corner from Bustamante. Punched away by Tchaikovsky, but right to the edge of the box. And then a left-footed shot goes well wide from Tyler Javik. It's not just Morris and Riley either. It's Ryan Tchaikovsky. The junior defender as well, number four. Absolutely, yeah. He's. Uh, you see him here on the near side. Yeah, you got Morris in the center. You got uh, Riley on the left and Joukowsky on the right. And Joukowsky, uh, Morris and Riley were back there last year with uh, Liam Gardner. And Joukowsky has fit in seamlessly with those guys taking Gardner's place. Joukowsky as well. Today, NJ.com's poll for the top New Jersey Junior ended today after a week of voting, and Tchaikovsky, or excuse me, Tchaikovsky finished seventh in that voting. That's pretty good for a yeah. defender. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, usually everybody just looks at the goals. Tchaikovsky, four goals and one assist on the year for the Spartans from the back line. Now that does make him tied for Steiner's second leading score. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <clears throat> Him and Tyler Tafro with four goals apiece. Chris Vega Ramirez with five, the team leader. Just 26 goals for the Spartans this year, a 9 2 and 3 record. Compared to 69 goals in 16 games for the Notre Dame Irish. Yep. But, you know, teams that can defend are always going to be in the game. Vericelli finding Honish. Landed Honus with the left foot across, headed straight down by Jacob Riley, and then cleared away. Steiner trying to counterattack Sam Narkin. 
on the near side and trying to keep it in, but being unable to do so is Caden O'Rourke. So Steiner will get a throw in. Notre Dame's tried to create a few opportunities with some crosses in the middle, but they either went wide of anybody or Steiner did a good job of getting in front of them. Good turnaround from Zach Barron as he finds Vega Ramirez and now go to Nass plays Norkin on the near side. Inside the box, Norkin met. But it rolls out of play before he's able to get a touch to it. And I actually guess they're going to call off sides or a foul. It's quickly played here by Notre Dame. Baricelli on the near side. Gets around Narkin. Now minimal space to work with, and it's knocked away by Godinez. Quickly taken again. Get a stoppage here. The I'm back. <laughs> the referee <laughs> coming over to have a chat with Sam Narkin, it looks like. You're lucky you don't have a big nose, Andrew, because when you have a big nose, it takes you forever to blow it when you have a cold. <laughs> Which is why I was off the air there for a few seconds. That time of the year, Fish. <laughs> a big time. <clears throat> Baricelli plays it wide. Palumbo, left-footed in swinging cross. Oh, Cleared nice away header. for a moment. Good flick, flick ahead. And Elliot Morris doing a nice job of keeping calm and clearing it away, but only as far as Baricelli, who plays it forward to Honish. And now Honish with a right-footed shot oh. off the bar. Oh, what an attempt from Landon Honish. Shouts for handball now from Notre Dame. The referee's right there. They don't call it. Wow. Honish just yeah, the ball just kind of squirted out, and Honish was right there. Cross Never in hesitated. Left footed touch. shot on the ground. Doesn't go, and now finally cleared away from Godinez. Now played out wide. Honish again on the near side. Gets around Godinez. Now Chakowski there, and he'll just play it out. Bustamante now working on Godinez, and it rolls out of play. Good job, Sam Narkin winning that ball back for the Irish. And then Baricelli comes right back in and wins it back for the Notre Dame. Baricelli now with a right-footed outside the boot cross, but it goes right into the hands of Tchaikovsky. And now Steiner can breathe a bit. Yeah, Steiner, Notre Dame starting to put a little pressure on now. Those are the first two shots on goal by either team. Started with that Honish rifle right outside the box. Who's <clears throat> had eyes for the top right corner, but just goes off the bar. Well, you know, in that Hun game that Steiner lost, Steiner put one off the crossbar in the first half. Would have been the game winner if it had gone in, but to no avail. Tchaikovsky again with it. He'll play it forward. Friendly flick for the Spartans. And then Tyler Taffer loses that one in the Irish on the counterattack. But the Spartans doing a nice job of... Getting it back for a moment. Irish now with the play forward. Here's Honish. Honish with a good touch off his right foot. A left foot across and stepping in front again. It's Elliot Morris. Great job by Barrett Shelley to just put it in there, put it over, and he stayed on side. Steiner's defense scrambling, but they did the job. 11.43 left to go in this first half. Notre Dame really putting the pressure on the Steiner defense. Yes, they are. I mean, in the first part, they were dominating possession. Now they're actually starting to pressure. <clears throat> Palumbo with a cross off the right foot. It's blocked by Jacob Riley, and it goes out of play. A corner for Notre Dame. You have a big enough water there, pal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Got to stay hydrated, Fish. I, I, I see that. Let's see. 50.7. One and a half liters for you right there. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully there's a bathroom nearby. <laughs> uh, I think so. Anthony has seen you. He was asking where it was before the game. Sorry, Anth. <laughs> Cross right to the spot. Oh. It's off the hand of Tchaikovsky. Oh. The goal beckoning, but Steiner able to get a body in front is Baricelli. That shot was definitely going on that, but able to clear it away. And now here's a chance for Steiner as Norkin had one guy to beat. And a good job defensively by Felipe Samuel to knock that away. 
Yeah, Baricelli saw that at his feet, he was getting ready to line up the shot, but slammed it right into a defender. <clears throat> Tchaikovsky coming well off his line to get a piece of that, but didn't get a ton on it. And it found the foot of Baricelli, but Sparring's able to get bodies in front with the left side of the goal wide open and able to block that Baricelli shot. Notre Dame gets possession back, though. Heard Anthony the scene moments ago saying we got to get the ball at our feet. Steiner really has been unable to keep possession for the last couple of minutes here. It's been all Notre Dame. But Samante now. Steiner on their heels. And a right-footed shot blocked. And that was Mandrucci with the shot. And now this one clears everybody, and Tchaikovsky is able to collect it safely. Under 10 minutes to go in this first half. No score between Steiner and Notre Dame. now trying to play it to the near side looking for Honish Sporin steps in and then winning it back is Lynch Will Lynch now back to Honish Honish looking for Lynch as Lynch gives chase but it's a little too much on that one and it rolls out of play yeah I tried a little give and go there Lynch laid it off and then cut in but to no avail <clears throat> Notre Dame with 69 goals this year 38 of those goals coming from Lynch Honish and Ercolano Mentioned Will Lynch with the CVC leading 22 goals. He's top five in the entire state in goals. Then you have Luca Urcolano with eight goals, 13 assists, and Landon Honish, eight goals, 12 assists. Three engines of this Notre Dame team. A good job defensively by Elliot Morris. You gotta say he's been the player of the game so far for the Spartans. Yeah, and another nice, nice try by Luigi Baricelli to get that, to chip that ball in to spots where it could be dangerous. Tchaikovsky with a lot on that punt, but Notre Dame able to regain possession. Here's Will Lynch now with some space. He knocks it ahead to Honish. Honish will try to keep it in play, and he does so nicely with the right foot. Honish now with the right foot across and stepping in front to block it is Tchaikovsky. And another Notre Dame corner. This time it's on the near side. It'll be Isaac Bustamante to take it. He'll play it short to Honish. Nobody out there for him. Now Honish with a lofted right-footed <laughs> shot. I think it was really a cross more so, but it got closer to the net and just peaks wide. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think he was trying to curl that in. <clears throat> well, we saw his other shot not far away from that spot. Hit the crossbar on the top right corner of the goal. That one missing everything, but Landon Honish threatening with these shots from about 18, 20 yards out. Yeah, off the left flank. He's uh, been dangerous going to the long side. Nothing to show for it yet. Tchaikovsky now switching fields nicely as he plays it into space, and Narkin gives chase. He beats Bustamante there. Sam Narkin now on the near side, working on two defenders. Bustamante, a good job of getting back. <laughs> now Steiner with possession again. Here's Narkin again. Races toward the corner. Sam Narkin against one defender, and it's Caden O'Rourke standing tall. And it goes out of play for a Steiner corner. Steiner needs to make something happen offensively. I mean, even if they don't score, they got to at least show that they can th threaten here. <clears throat> Joseph Palumbo enters for the first time today for the Spartans, number 18. It'll be Derek Monahan on this corner for Steiner. 6.35 left to go and counting in this first half, still scoreless. <laughs> waiting here for Sam Narkin to make his way off the field. <laughs> Taking his sweet time as the Steiner uh, yeah. midfielder. <laughs> Finally off now, Monahan to take it. It's an outswinger and right into the hands, and they're actually going to say it went out of play before it was caught by Merluz. Not sure if the wind had a factor in that one, but regardless. Where did it go out of play at? Did somebody I guess it went, it, behind the, it went behind the net. It kind of went in and then back out. Like, if you kick it into the – the play and then it goes back behind the net. It's technically out of bounds. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. <clears throat> Good job by Braden Quinn to keep his body in front there. And we're going to get our first yell of the day, and it's going to go to Will Lynch. Mm. 
Didn't look too blatant, what, whatever he did there. No, unless he said something. And yeah, the referee right there and didn't hesitate to go to his pocket. So it's a yellow card for Will Lynch. I don't know. Maybe Lynch is a little frustrated. He hasn't really had too many opportunities today. Yeah, the one header that went over to goal, but hasn't got a lot of touches. Well, that's something to keep an eye on during the final 50 or 45 minutes of this game. It's Will Lynch. Yeah, if you're Notre Dame, I mean, you got your best scorer sitting on the bench for the time being. Elliot Morris trying to work it out, but good step defensively by Mandrucci. And now Notre Dame will try to break out. Here's Bustamante. Bustamante inside. Great job by Mandrucci to keep his ball at his feet. Here's Palumbo. Palumbo with a left foot across inside, a flick ahead. <laughs> finds a foot of Honish, and then right there to clear it away is Jacob Riley. Nice job by the Spartan defender, and then a shot goes well over the bar from Jace Palumbo. It was a Mandarucci with that header, that backwards header. Yeah, the flick on. Yeah, that was that was well done. And again, <laughs> it seems like there's a magnet on Landon Honish's foot. It seems like everything's fine in number seven right now for the yeah, Irish. Yeah, for sure. Under five to play in the first half. No score between Steiner and Notre Dame on the WBCB Sports Network. Andrew Myers alongside Rich Fisher. And now another chance for Notre Dame. Here's a cross all the way on the uh, ground. It goes through everybody, everybody. Yeah. All Steiner defenders letting it roll away. I don't think Tchaikovsky was happy about that. But no harm, no foul for Steiner. One thing about Notre Dame possessing all game, at least the action's been in front of us. <laughs> yeah, We're down true. here by the Steiner goal. That's true. <clears throat> Tchaikovsky now pushing his teammates forward under four to go in this first half. Zach Barton plays it to the near side. Here's Andrew Ivins, or Susie Payne and Breyer. Breyer loses it, but then intercepted again by Monahan. And now Vericelli plays it. Good cross all the way to the far side. Picked up by Tyler Javik with two defenders on him. And now Steiner will try to break out. Javik with the slide tackle from behind. They'll play advantage. And Steiner looks for a counter. Braden Quinn on the far side. Still with it, and that rolls out of play. Down, Quinn goes. It'll stay with Steiner. Scoreless game, three minutes to go. It's been mostly Notre Dame, but Steiner's starting to find some pockets of possession offensively. Not many, though. No, it's it. <laughs> if they do have them, it's not for a long period of time. Yeah. But they have been able to connect some passes here and there in the last couple of minutes as opposed to the first 15 or 20 minutes of this game. Right, I mean, at least they've gotten it down into the final third. It'll be a free kick for Steiner, it's a low one. Headed away by Palumbo. Hmm. Back heel flick from Zach Barton, but an Irish defender in the way. And then down goes Braden Quinn, and it'll be another foul on Notre Dame. Steiner with a free kick here. So they push bodies in front, see if the Spartans can seal a goal here late in this first half. Uh, it's been known to happen. Cleared in, running the edge of box, mm. flicked ahead. And then getting a foot on it, but unable to keep it in play is a Spartan and Peyton Breyer. Notre Dame will take this goal kick quickly. And that miscommunication there from two Irish on the far side and this throw in taken quickly by Steiner. Coming in a right footed shot, goes well wide off Chris DeMarco. And now Notre Dame can take their time a bit here as the clock winds down toward a minute left in this first half. And the thing you want to do now is just 
you know, keep it on the ground. You don't want to put it up in the air where some crazy wind-blown ball can get, you know, do something fluky. Really, that's what you want to do the whole game. Keep it on the ground. Don't let the wind make a big impact. That one pushed ahead looking for Honish, but stepping in front to clear it was Chikowski. Still with the Irish, though. Played down by Lynch, but then knocked out of play. A <laughs> couple bodies go down as Will Lynch goes down with Braden Quinn. And a Steiner throw in less than 30 seconds left to go. Morris plays it ahead. Finding space and then a flick ahead as they try to find Peyton Breyer. And a shot and oh. a good save there from Anthony Merlus out of nowhere. It was Matt Tafro with the shot. 10 seconds left on the clock. Steiner's going to race to the corner to try to take this. Six seconds left to go. Five to go. Cross in. Through everybody, one last chance for Joukowsky, and it goes wide as the buzzer sounds. And what an exciting final 20 seconds to that one. Almost out of nowhere, we talked about Steiner maybe trying to steal a goal here. And it was a beautiful play out of nothing. It was Monahan playing it ahead, and Matt Taffer had a shot. On goal, Merluz had to handle it. <laughs> you, you worded that perfectly. A beautiful play out of nothing. It wasn't, all it was was they were just rushing the ball up the yeah. field. And like you said, Monaghan gave it to him. He let it rip. And then they almost, uh, off of that corner kick, got something. Yeah, Taffro found some space and knocked it ahead and able to stand tall as Anthony Merluz for really the first time today, making a big save for Notre Dame to keep this game scoreless as we had to halftime. No score between Notre Dame and Steyer in this huge Colonial Valley Conference matchup. Take a quick break here and discuss some stats from the first half at our halftime show here on the WBCB Sports Network. Stick with us. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, I'm Sean Spiller, President of the New Jersey Education Association. On behalf of the 200,000 educators in all of our public schools, we wish all of our student athletes the very best luck in today's competition. We would also like to recognize the students in our public schools who participate in extracurricular activities, like the school play, robotics class, or the marching band. New Jersey schools are number one in the nation. When parents, schools, and educators work together, our students are the winners. New Jersey Education Association supports our great public schools.
Hi, Meryl Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365. At 609-882-6365, come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Hi, Merrill Reese for Capital Health, reminding you that the former St. Francis Medical Center is now Capital Health East, and they still offer a 24-7 emergency department as well as outpatient medical clinic services. To enter the emergency department and outpatient clinic, please use the Burt Avenue entrance. Capital Health, proud to be a partner for better health in our state's capital, Trenton, New Jersey. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, Model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, Merrill Reese Remind you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365. At 609-882-6365, come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Hamilton Township in Mercer County is fortunate to have many fine businesses that serve our community. Saul Funeral Home is a fourth-generation family-owned business proud to support our local schools and community. Their compassionate and caring staff is there for you and your family. They'll bring the closure you deserve while also celebrating the life of your loved one. Visit their website at SaulFuneralHomes.com. That's SaulFuneralHomes.com. Saul Funeral Home at 3795 Nottingham Way, Hamilton Square. 1490 WBCB Levitan and Trenton and video stream live at WBCBSports.com. Your home for the best local sports in Bucks and Mercer Counties. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org.
I'm Sean Spiller, president of the New Jersey Education Association. On behalf of the 200,000 educators in all of our public schools, we wish all of our student athletes the very best luck in today's competition. We would also like to recognize the students in our public schools who participate in extracurricular activities, like the school play, robotics class, or the marching band. New Jersey schools are number one in the nation. When parents, schools, and educators work together, our students are the winners. New Jersey Education Association supports our great public schools. Today's Notre Dame versus Steiner boys soccer game on the WBCB Sports Network is brought to you by the Hamilton Township Education Association, who would like to take this opportunity to wish all of our students the best of luck this school term. We are proud to support you. This message is brought to you by the Hamilton Township Education Association. Today's game also brought to you by Hyundai of Trenton. Car by Made Simple on Hyundai of Trenton, 1655 North Olden Avenue, Ewing Township. Over 100 new Hyundai models from Launchers and Sonatas to SUVs like the Hyundai Santa Fe, Tucson, and Palisade, including hybrid models. Hyundai of Trenton has the inventory, including a huge selection of pre-owned certified vehicles. No market adjustments on any car in stock. Get an extra $1,000 rebate trade-in value toward any new vehicle. Hyundai of Trenton will buy your vehicle <coughs> even if you don't purchase a car. Fast payment, top dollar, paid for your car. Hyundai of Trenton, car buying made simple in the area's fastest growing dealership at 1655 North Olden Avenue, Ewing Township. And of course, don't forget if you missed any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. If you're complete local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week, it's the Trentonian. Alongside Rich Fisher, I'm Andrew Myers. Second half action between Notre Dame and Steiner about to get underway. Scoreless as we head into the second half, Fish. Yeah, Notre Dame had uh, the shots advantage, seven to three, but. Uh, each goalie only made one save, uh, you know. Um, Tchaikovsky, although although Tchaikovsky only made one save, there was a shot that rifled off the f crossbar. Yeah, Landon that, Honish with that one. Yeah, the Honish had. And you got to give Anthony Merluse a lot of credit. Here's a kid, he was barely doing anything for the first 39 minutes of that half. It's really easy to be lulled into, you know, just complacency. And then especially when it's in, like, the final 30 seconds, you're just figuring, all right, let's just get to halftime. And, you know, when they launched that shot, when Matt Taffer launched that shot, he was ready for it. And credit to him for keeping his head in the game for the full 40 minutes. Yeah, the two big chances was that Honus shot off the bar, and then you just mentioned that Taffer shot about 20 seconds left in the first half. <clears throat> Team switching fields now, Notre Dame in their home blues going left to right. Stoddard in their road whites right to left. It's a battle on the near side to begin. Yeah, Lynch and Morris. A top defender and a top forward. Cleared away by the Irish for a moment. And now switching fields as Angelino plays it to the other side. Well, Samante getting around a defender, a left footed cross inside, but it's going to go behind the net. Steiner will regroup. Now, which team do you think was more satisfied with the first half, Fish? I would have to think Steiner just yeah. because they escaped with a scoreless. Well, I <laughs> uh, let me let me let me reverse that. I think Notre Dame because they played a better first half. I think you know they just didn't score. They had opportunities, but they didn't score. I mean, I don't know, I guess that's how you look at it. We got outplayed, but it's scoreless, or we outplayed them, and it's just a matter of time before the goal is going to come. Ryan, you would, you would think maybe more optimism than frustration from Notre Dame. Yeah. And again, like I said, Steiner has been in a million of these kind of games. They're used to playing with the score nothing, nothing, or one nothing. Elliot Morris barking out instructions from the back line. Him and Jacob Riley standing in midfield as the Spartans try to keep their attack, but Notre Dame able to bust out now. And here's Lynch, three on two developing, but now Spartans able to get another defender back, and Riley able to step in front of that pass. Monahan loses it, though, and Tyler Javik with it for the Irish. He goes down, pass intercepted. And now played ahead, looking for Sam Narkin on the far side, but it'll roll out of play. I mean, one thing's for certain, 
Steinert's going to have to control the ball a little bit more if they want to, you know, make any <laughs> any chance of scoring a goal. They almost came up with one in the waning seconds there, but got to try to build something. You got to put some passes together, build the attack a little bit. Yeah, we haven't really seen that from Steiner in their offensive third, putting together two, three, four passes to find a shooting lane. It's kind of uh -huh. just been random shots from wherever they can find it. Jacob Riley patiently waiting for someone to get open. He plays it forward off the foot of Vega Ramirez, but one back by the Spartans. Now pushing it ahead is Zach Barton. Barton looking for Vega Ramirez, but it's cleared away, at least for now. And Steiner wins it back. Chris DeMarco now. DeMarco plays it into space, switching fields to Tchaikovsky, who one time passes it ahead, but unable to find a teammate. And the Irish will clear out. Only as far as Elliot Morris, though, plays it into space, but racing ahead to win it. <laughs> and a foul called on Steiner. There was a battle there between Braden Quinn and Tyler Javik. Nick Angelino over this one for Notre Dame. Punched into the box. No Irish there, though. Steiner able to clear. Played back in by O'Rourke. Again, O'Rourke stepping in, but it's cleared away. And it rolls back to Felipe Samuel, who will play it back to his keeper. Steiner just can't get things set up. I mean, their game is playing that short passing game. You know, try to keep possession. And we heard head coach Anthony Jacin late in the first half say we got to keep the ball on the ground. And yeah, well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> they do. It's they're not. You know, they don't like to play long ball. <laughs> go over the top with these balls. They like to keep it on the ground, build an attack. But they're just having trouble getting any. These Notre Dame defenders are doing a nice job. Palumbo looking and the for, midfielders <clears throat> looking for Will Lynch, but too heavy of a pass there and a roll out of play. You would think maybe Steiner would think about just playing it short here on these goal kicks and that kind of build out from the back as opposed to punching it ahead. Yeah, that hasn't seemed to be working. Yeah, look at that, right? <laughs> Tchaikovsky, he's got a good boot for a keeper and is, uh, is a good weapon to have, but Hasn't really been working out for the Spartans today. Playing it out of the back like that. Here's Narkin on the far side. Working on O'Rourke, the freshman. Sam Narkin, the senior. And O'Rourke wins that battle, at least for now, as he knocks it out of play for a throw in. Sam Narkin will take it. Four Spartans in the box. Flicked on by Vega Ramirez into the spot and cleared away by Jace Palumbo as Braden Quinn was right there winding up for a shot. Spartan throw in one by the Irish with then pinballed back and forth here on the edge of the box. Irish able to escape. And they play it forward, headed away by Tchaikovsky and then a good pass in the middle to Zach Barron who plays it to the near side. Riley back to Barron who gives it to Morris and it's a good communication here between the Spartans on the back line. Played ahead looking for Narkin. Narkin goes to the ground and he'll chase this one again as that ball squeaks out toward the far side and Narkin will see it out. Oh. <laughs> Got a little physical over there. Yeah, Anthony Tassin <laughs> puts his hands up on the bench looking for some sort of call. Both referees got up there in the other cheek. Yeah. And, and now another body goes down. It was, I think it's Bustamante that went down. The clock will stop. And the referee will bring both of them over yeah. to have a word with them. It's Sam Narkin. Okay, no cards. Referee Just a warning. 
does not go to the pocket there. Having a discussion with Sam Narkin and Bustamante. That was getting a little chippy over there. Yeah, tight game here between two programs I know plenty about each other, so you'd expect some chippiness maybe. Chase Palumbo with it now. Has to play it ahead with Zach Barron on him. Oh, whew. Jacob <laughs> Riley not really playing the ball there. Uh, it looked like he kind of got an arm, an elbow up there. Now the Irish trying to play it quickly, Ooh, and that card goes out to Braden Quinn. So each team issued a card. Now Will Lynch got a card late in that first half, and now Braden Quinn does, uh, receives a caution there. He'll come off. And then steps Byron Godinez. Free kick for the Irish on the near side. Again, it's Nick Angelino over it, awaiting the referee's signal to let him go. And <laughs> he did not get that signal from the referee <laughs> as he goes and plays on. The ref said, hold on a minute. Angelino frustrated with that. Angelino's father, James, one of the assistant coaches here for Notre Dame. James, the mayor of Hamilton, Angelino. <laughs> <clears throat> Scorpion attempt there from Will Lynch, and then he again tries to find it, but it's cleared away by Steiner only for a moment here. Now Lynch with a oh. shot. It's off his shin, it kind of seemed like, so it went wide of the net, stays in play, and then cleared out by Steiner. So it'll stay with Notre Dame. It'll be a throw-in on the near side. Lynch is one of those guys, yeah, he won't do much all game, and then all of a sudden, you've always got to be worried about him, though, because all of a sudden, he'll just go boom. Cross in, looking for Lynch again. Well, Lynch unable to get to it, and Tchaikovsky covers up. Yeah, you don't score 22 goals on accident, Fish, so. No. <laughs> Will Lynch, certainly a talented player out top there for Notre Dame, but Steiner has held him at bay today so far. Landon Honish has really been the name to watch for Notre Dame, attack-wise. <laughs> Flicked ahead, looking for Honish now, but stepping in front is Morris, so he'll knock it away, and it'll be a corner kick on the far side for Notre Dame. the fifth corner for the Irish in this game. Isaac Bustamante over it. And now we'll get a stoppage here. Another yellow card issue to a Spartan. And yeah, is that Elliot Morris? I think it is. I think it is Elliot Morris and not <laughs> exactly what you're looking for there. Now Steiner has to scramble here to figure out who they're going to bring on for Arguably their best player today in Elliot Morris. Hmm. Didn't see what happened there in the box. Not sure if it was pushing or shoving or maybe could have been some words exchanged. Two yellows within a minute for the Spartans. Yeah. Third yellow card issued today. So Morris will step out for a bit. Cross in off the header. It's still up in the air and Tchaikovsky Beats everybody to and is able to collect. And now he'll try to break out quickly for the Spartans. He punts it clear. Sam Narkin well, didn't even know where the ball was, Sam Narkin. He was just barreling towards the goal, hoping it would bounce in front of him. And it bounces into the hands of Anthony Merluse. So now Notre Dame will reset. Tell you what, you look up in that sun, you're going to lose it. <laughs> yeah. Good step in there from Gavin Giolella, who's entered the game, and now flag goes up offside for Steiner. Gavin Giolella, the senior midfielder out there on the back line now, coming in for Morris. Yeah, his father also a coach, the Steiner baseball coach. Lots of coaches' sons in the game today. Mm -hmm.
Felipe Samuel will take this one. In Notre Dame's half, will put it ahead to the edge of the box, and it's flicked back off a of Steinert head. So Tchaikovsky is going to have to collect before it goes out of play, and he will do so. Now plays it ahead to Vega Ramirez off the flick from DeMarco. Vega Ramirez again. Good job defensively winning that back from Angelino. DeMarco will play it back to Riley, who tries to reset for the Spartans. Vega Ramirez gets around one defender. Plays it out wide to Tafro. But Tafro, a heavy touch there, and Bustamante in the right place at the right time, able to clear it away. Now Tchaikovsky with a weak pass, trying to get it to Tchaikovsky, and it's collected by the Irish. Chance for Notre Dame. Good step in front there by Zach Barton. That's cleared away, at least for now. It'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame looked like they had a chance there, like they were going to have something cooking. But yeah, Martin came over. It's Ryan Tchaikovsky trying to pass it back to his goalkeeper, Dennis Tchaikovsky, and didn't have enough on it. And now here's a shot off the right foot of Luke Ercolano, and it goes out of play. And now we will see Elliot Morris re-enter, as does Matt Tafro. Haven't mentioned Matt Tafro's name much today. One goal in the year for the senior. Playing the number 17, he's up top now for Spartans. Who got the? Well, Matt Taffer had the shot, right? The, the, the shot rate at the yeah, end of the Yeah, at the half. end of the first yeah. half, yeah. <clears throat> oh, that one, uh, awkward save there from Tchaikovsky. Is he not enough sure if he slipped there? And he's holding his, shaking out his hand right now. Keep an eye on that. Tchaikovsky yeah. shaking out his right hand. Yeah, that was some anxious moments there for Steiner because the ball came in and he couldn't corral it. St Tried to scoop it up, and it just rolled loose. Irish almost making something out of nothing. And now puts to Monte with a shot, and it goes well wide. <laughs> Notre Dame now starting to pick it up offensively. Saw them do that plenty in the first half, but Steiner with the bend don't break defense. <laughs> Riley goes down. Foul called, though. Notre Dame not happy with the call. Elliot Morris punches it ahead, flicked off an Irish player. Lynch finds it. Plays it ahead for Honish, but stepping in is Elliot Morris. He knocks it forward. Vega Ramirez giving chase with Palumbo there. Ooh. It's off the goalie, and then whistle goes. Yeah. Fortunately for Notre Dame. <laughs> as Merluz came well out, well out there as Palumbo <clears throat> is trying to shield off Vega Ramirez. And Matt Tafro is getting ready to lift that into the open net. But play correctly stopped. Offensive opportunities, tough to come by here today. Vega Ramirez battling with Palumbo. Flicked ahead by Godinez and now punched forward by the Irish. And Riley and Morris trying to connect on passes there, but Morris with a slip, or excuse me, Riley with a slip and It'll go out of play for a Notre Dame throw. Irish take it. Here's Angelino. He'll switch the fields. O'Rourke to Bustamante. Baricelli plays it in front. Slide inside to Honish, and Honish with a shot. It kind of looked like he had trouble getting out of his feet there. And Tchaikovsky able to collect. Sparring keep we're rolling out to the near side. Vega Ramirez coming back to collect. He'll play it back to Jacob Riley. 
And that pass intercepted. I'll tell you, the Irish, it seems like they're playing with 14, 15 flyers uh, at uh, some uh, certain uh, points in this game. Just going to say that they are just a step ahead every every step of the way. And there's a good touch there from Tyler Tafro and the Spartans with something here. Four on three developing for the Spartans. And a good job getting back defensively by Caden O'Rourke. Down goes Tafro, no cold. And a good recovery there by Caden O'Rourke, the freshman. Flicked ahead, Lynch. Looks like he got a hand to the face there from Jacob Riley, no call. Steiner, or excuse me, Notre Dame, keeps possession. Javik now with a cross on the ground off his right foot. Pinballed back and forth, and then Lynch gives it a left-footed shot, but it goes well wide. Yeah, Lynch just <laughs> tried to just get a foot on it there and hope it went somewhere, but it went way wide. Sub now for the Spartans as their leading scorer, Chris Vega Ramirez, will step off. Back on is Braden Quinn. Quinn, one of the three players issued a yellow card so far today. He and Elliot Morris for Steiner. Will Lynch for Notre Dame, something to keep an eye on in the final 23 minutes of regulation here. Like Steiner has to be, feel frustrated right now. I mean, they just cannot generate anything. Yeah, even if defense is really the name of their game, you're not getting any sort of yeah. you know collect, uh, you know pockets of possession in the defensive or excuse me, offensive half. Here's a cross here for Notre Dame back into the middle, looking for Lynch or excuse me for Honish, and now here's a shot blocked away and a counterattack opportunity for for Steiner, racing forward and getting fouled by Bustamante, clock stops. Can't get a number there from that player. Looks like it's Brayden Quinn down yeah. on the ground. Number three, yeah, Bustamante is gonna get a yellow. And the referee having a chat with Luigi Baricelli there as Bustamante will come off. That's the fourth yellow of the game. Two for each team. Yep. Something to keep an eye on for these two teams. And now a chance off a set piece for Steiner, and it's Tyler Taffro over it, over it right now. Well, they haven't been able to score and run a play, and maybe, maybe they have better luck here on a set piece. This one from about 30 yards out, right in the middle of the goal, slightly off to the right. Tyler Taffro with it, two-man wall for Notre Dame. Tafro, both hands up, knocks it in. It's a cross, bodies go down, still going, and now whistle goes as Tchaikovsky's shot goes over the bar, and it's a foul on Steiner. And once again, that freshman, Caden O'Rourke, <laughs> took that high, tall frame and got right up and headed that free kick out. That kid's tough to get it by if you got a ball in the air. You're better off going low against him. He's got to bend down further. <clears throat> Kane O'Rourke and Felipe Samuel, the sophomore, number 19. Not two guys two guys will be part of that back line for the Irish for a couple of years. Not that he's going to bend down and pick it up, but you know what I mean. Can't you use your hands, Fish. Can't you use your hands. No, here. no. <laughs> but he ain't going to get it fast from going high. <laughs> Stepping in there is Samuel, and he flicks it ahead. Will Lynch with it now. Angelino will play it out wide. Trying to find a teammate forward, unable to do so though as Steiner steps in and Crystal Marco will try to reset. He'll play it back to Chakowski who's looking for Quinn up ahead. And yet, that was exactly what you're talking about right there, Fish. Kane O'Rourke just put his body in front in three attempted passes for Steiner. Yep. And three different ways O'Rourke just gets in front of it and no way you're going to pass him. Uh, it's a one-man wall. Baricelli gets around two defenders, plays it to the near side, but it's it through Godinez. And now we got a player without a shoe, or a cleat, Jace Palumbo. 
Halfway through the second half, still scoreless between Notre Dame and Steiner. And neither team really threatening each goalkeeper, or either goalkeeper in the second half. Much like it was in the first half. <clears throat> Here's a chance now, flicked ahead for the Irish, goes wide of the net. And it'll roll out for another Notre Dame corner. I mean, that's the thing. We're talking about Notre Dame having possession and everything, but they haven't really done a lot with the possession. Good step in by Godinez there. And now Matt Tafro with two Irish defenders on him. Good step in there from Palumbo to win that one. And then Tafro with some frustration tugs the jersey. And he's going to get a yellow card. I am. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not sure what that was all about. Well, now both the Taffers have yellows. Yeah, not totally sure I agree with that one. But, you know, the referee, he's staying consistent with it. So, got to give him credit for that. But a little tug of the jersey gets a yellow card from Matt Taffro. Now three sparrings on a yellow card. Palumbo, the one who was fouled, knocks it ahead. Oh, wait. The other Taffo didn't have a yellow. This is everybody. And a chance there goes wide. Yeah, it's Braden Quinn and Elliot Morris, Morris the yeah. other two. Yeah, my bad. <clears throat> sparrings with the yellow as Matt Taffro joins them. Notre Dame with the corner on the near side. It'll be Luca Urcolano to take it. Only five in the box for the Irish. This one crossed to the far side. It's knocked back. Tchaikovsky gets in front of it once, and here's a shot. Just goes wide. Can't make out the number who got the shot there. Yeah, I can't either. Wait till we're going to turn around. I, I think it's Bustamante. He's normally on the left side. And actually, I believe it's Antonio Mandrucci, the number nine. I, it is. I think yep. you're right, yeah. Mandrucci with the shot goes wide. And Steinert again, able to hold defensively. But yeah, the frustration's got to be mounting here, maybe for both sides. For both sides, for sure. Yeah, I mean. You know, and then you get, you get, you get to that certain point of when do you stop playing for the win and playing for overtime, you know? Like, the, you don't want to do anything too crazy. Barin plays it to the corner. Braden Quinn. Quinn back to Barin. Barin with the right foot across, and it's an awkward one as it rolls outside of the box. One back by Notre Dame, flicked ahead by the Sparins. Then racing forward and collecting is Will Lynch. And that one rolls out of play. And it'll be a Steiner throw-in. <laughs> under set, excuse me, under 18 minutes to go here in regulation. Still looking for our first goal. Oh. Steiner did not score at all against Hun the other day. Uh, didn't score in the first half today. Stoppage here as it'll go Notre Dame's way. And some frustration showing now from the Irish. Yes, yeah, Steiner, three goals in their last four games, two of them coming in that 2 nothing win against Princeton. Right. The other one, the 1-1 one -one tie against Robbinsville. Yeah, shut out against Cherokee, shut out against Hun. If you're Notre Dame, you really want to try to get get the ball to Lynch. I mean, he's your guy. Good move by Urcolano. Looking for Lynch there, and then it goes through, and Honish with a shot. It goes wide, but referee's arm is up, so offside is called. It's starting to get a little colder here. Yeah, it's sun now creeping behind the clouds and the trees. Yeah. Turn. 
Sparrins will try to build out from the back here. Elliot Morris knocks it forward. Godin is giving chase, but Palumbo there to knock it away. Well, that's the first time we saw Steiner try to go over the top a little bit. Maybe that's what you need to do. You, you weren't doing a good job of building. Bodies go down. Vega Ramirez and Ercolano with a battle there. And Ercolano takes that free kick quickly. Nice moves there from Luigi Baricelli to get around a couple defenders. Switches the field for Notre Dame. Left foot across, bounces right into the box. Morris takes it. Now Morris will take it out himself with a little bit of space. Plays it ahead for the Spartans. Good move around one defender and another one from Sam Norkin. Norkin still with it and just loses it at the last moment. He puts his hands up looking for a corner. He's not going to get it. Well, that was some nice work by both Morris and Narkum. And Narkum just kind of took a little too deep in before he tried to get a shot off. But, you know. I think Morris it just did a good job of just doing that and maybe just sparking this team a little, giving it a little life. <clears throat> when I say giving it a little life, I mean, you know, in the attacking end. Steiner looking for another one of those sacks. Here's Chris Vega Ramirez. He goes down, a big collision. But they'll play on. Sam Narkin now cuts it back inside. Narkin looking for space, and he's unable to get it. Played forward, Urcolano now working on Jacob Riley. Still racing a tackle from the back, and this has got to be a card for Jacob Riley. Yep. <clears throat> Referee brings out that yellow card. Sixth yellow card issued today, fourth for Notre, or excuse me, for Steiner. All in this half, right? Yeah, the only yeah. yellow card from the first half was the Will Lynch yellow card. Right. The other five, four to the Sparrins, and then the one to Bustamante, all in the second half. And that one, a clear one there. A foul from behind from Jacob Riley. Didn't get the ball. Easy decision for the referee, and now free kick for Notre Dame at midfield. Played in the box, flick toward goal, but then it rolls wide. It's off a of Spartan, so it'll be a Notre Dame corner. The Irish got to be approaching double-digit corners at this point. They've had a ton of corners in the second half alone. It'll be an in-swinger. Cross stand on the far side. It's Vericelli who got a foot to it, but it goes over the bar. Again, Steiner unable to hold defensively off a set piece. 13.40 left to go in regulation. No score between Notre Dame and Steiner. Thanks for joining us on the WBCB Sports Network. Andrew Myers alongside Rich Fisher. I actually have Notre Dame with seven corners. Definitely more than the Spartans, though. Yeah, they've only got uh, They actually had four in the first half, Steiner did, but they don't have any, any in this half. Step in there from DeMarco. Good win for the Sparrins, and he tries to unleash Narkin, but plays it too close to the sideline, and Narkin not able to keep it in play. Notre Dame throw right in front of the Steiner bench. Now I would guess the winner of this game probably get the number two seed in the CVC tournament because you have. Robbinsville, unless they lose to, well, you never know what's going on with that Hopewell Robbinsville game either, so I don't know. Robbinsville top the CVC Colonial standings entering this game. Yeah. 12 0 2. He's narking now on the far side, looking for something here. He cuts it back. And then back inside off the goal line and tries to get a last second cross, but it goes out of play. Steiner trying to feed Sam Narkin out there on the far side, on the right side. Yeah. 
Samuel takes, it's flicked ahead toward the corner, played out by Ryan Tchaikovsky. Notre Dame will get a throw in, and they're attacking third. To the corner, Bustamante with a right-footed cross. Nobody there as it's headed away by Steiner. Vega Ramirez with a flick ahead, and it's cleared out by Zach Barton. Notre Dame playing it back and forth, and good yeah. job by Samuel to get that one away. Yeah, almost back and forth it back to the goal. Now a battle between Byron Godinez and the freshman Luke Coulter, and Coulter is able to win a corner for Notre Dame. Stoppage now as Caden O'Rourke comes off for Notre Dame. Maybe deciding to go a little more attack-minded here with 10 minutes left in regulation as Landon Honish rejoins the party. Here's a cross off the corner, headed away by Steiner, and they'll get out of their 18. As Notre Dame will reset, play it all the way back to their keeper, Anthony Merluse. Merluse seems like he's had the ball at his feet more than he's had it in his hands today. Steiner really has not tested the Notre Dame keeper. Merluse has actually had one save the whole game. <laughs> Merluse knocks it ahead only as far as Chris DeMarco, or excuse me, as Zach Barrian who heads it down. Notre Dame now with it, potential handball uh, there, handball, and it is yeah. on Lynch. Just unlucky bounce there for yep. Will Lynch. Really surprised. I mean, Steiner has not been, you know, they haven't locked on to Lynch, like with the guys just man marking them the whole, the whole all over the field. But he really has not, you know, I can't remember a lot of opportunities that he's had. Can you? No, I, I think that also speaks to the confidence of Anthony Ticina and this Steiner defense, this back line that you don't have to lock up a guy like that and no, well, to the, win, you know. The other thing you can do is is prevent the other guys from getting them the ball. Right. Which they've done so very well. A good step yeah. there from Elliot Morris. He'll take it himself and join the attack. Tyler Tafro now with a right-footed shot blocked. Morris trying to find another teammate. Tafro with a shot blocked again. Bigger Ramirez now coming back. He goes down. No foul. Mr. Only as far as Chris DeMarco, though. DeMarco... Flicks it wide, looking for Braden Quinn, but too much on that one. Well, that was a welcome flurry if you're Steiner. <laughs> At least got something going, but again, they never really got the ball on goal. Yeah, a couple of shots from Tyler Tafro there, but neither of them made it past the 18-yard no. box because yeah. <laughs> there was Irish defenders in front to block it. Yeah. I don't really count them much as shots when they bang off the defender <laughs> 10 feet after you shoot it. <clears throat> Goal kick, one back by Steiner. Here's Tyler Tafro. Tafro gets on one defender, now knocks into his teammate. Tafro finds his brother. Matt Tafro with a shot, it's bored down and in! What a goal from Tyler Tafro! And the Spartans take the lead! It's the brotherly connection! Absolutely, Matt Tafro on the right, on the, on the right side, gathered it in. Quick cross of brother Tyler, he one, one timed it. And I don't, I don't think that he get a hand on it. Did Merluse get a hand on it? I don't all? think so. That was a powerful so. shot there from about 12 yards out, bar down and in. A beautiful goal from Tyler Tafro. It's his fifth of the year, first assist of the season for Matt Tafro. And isn't it fitting that it goes to his brother? Yeah, it hit the, the underneath of the crossbar, and the English took it in. And I'll tell you what, for a team that struggled offensively all game, that was a really pretty goal. <clears throat> so a completely different ball game now with eight minutes left to go in regulation. A one nothing lead for Steiner off the goal from Tyler Tafro. You know, we said at the start, too, with this Notre Dame offense that Steiner is going to want to try to keep it close and maybe try to steal one, just get a goal at the end. And I wouldn't call that stealing it. That was just a nice play. Oh. But... You know, Steiner had kept it a scoreless game, finally got a good opportunity, 
That's only the second shot on goal by the Spartans for the entire game. But, and now, now you're going to see Notre Dame with a bigger sense of purpose, too, offensively. Yeah, now Steiner, <clears throat> the last seven minutes and change here, going to try to do what they do best, and that's play defense. Yeah, they'll defend. Good slide in there as he knocks it away. Jacob Riley. Notre Dame got to believe going to turn it up here in the final seven minutes here. Crossed in, a header from Honest and a save from Tchaikovsky. Oh, man. Well done on both sides. Landon Honish found himself all alone in the box there. Header going towards the top right corner, and Tchaikovsky able to get there and punch it away. It'll be a corner for Notre Dame. Cross in by Palumbo. Headed back toward the middle. Bericelli looking for a shot. It's cleared away. Only toward the top of the box and finally able to get it out. And now here's Matt Tafro racing toward the corner. Knocked away by Notre Dame. It's off of Tafro, so it'll be a throw in for Notre Dame. So it's interesting, both the Steiner shots on goal were by the Tafro brothers today. Yeah, we had Matt Tafro with that opportunity right before the first half ended. That tested Merluse. And then it's Matt Tafro finding his brother Tyler on the goal for Steiner. A couple minutes ago, give the Spartans a lead. Under six minutes left to play. Notre Dame desperate for an equalizer. And Steiner clears away. Matt Tafro now. As the Spartans try to get out of their box, Tafro goes down. And they'll play on there. Not yeah. sure how that's going to keep going. <laughs> his bodies continue to fly into each other, and now the whistle will go. And referee, hey, interesting there. Referee just checking his pocket, seeing who has the yellows there. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's why he was looking, but that's, I'm assuming that's why he was looking. Doesn't bring out the card, but... Gives it a look there. Six yellow cards issued so far today. Four for Steiner, two for Notre Dame. Dennis Tchaikovsky coming all the way up near midfield to take this. And he'll play it short. Tchaikovsky plays it up the line. Braden Quinn with the dummy trying to get it to the corner. Still with it. And it's off his foot. And rolls out for a goal kick. Steiner shouting for a corner. Anthony Tassin still <laughs> shouting for a corner, but it's not going to get what he wished for. You rarely do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Notre Dame better get moving. Oh, the clock stopped. Yeah, we got some subs uh, coming in and out as the goal scorer, Tyler Tafro, steps off. Coming on is Bola Morris, listed as a defender, but he's out here up top for Steiner. Wearing number 13. And now racing ahead is Chris Vega Ramirez. Vega Ramirez going toward the corner with Palumbo on him. Vega Ramirez. He's probably fine keeping it there. And the whistle goes. Foul on Vega Ramirez. <laughs> Tension starting to build here at Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. Four minutes left to go in regulation. A 1-0 lead for Steiner. Trying to nurse that one goal lead <laughs> for the last four minutes. <laughs> That's when that clock seems to be going. One second seems like five seconds every click of the clock. Elliot Morris waiting for that one to get into his vicinity, trying to clear it away. And whistle goes. It'll be a Steiner goal kick, and they'll take their time here. Or free kick, excuse me. Would be a huge win for Steiner. Would be their 10th of the season. Yep. We'll guarantee him second place, I think, in the division. I think. I'm not sure how many games Princeton have played. Look out. Notre Dame now Look racing out. forward. Cross in right place at right time. Chakowski in the middle and he'll clear it away. Punch back forward. By the Irish and now flicked back from Chris DeMarco. Not sure what he was trying to do there. 
And it goes out for a Notre Dame corner, and they'll take it quickly. And Merluse jogging ahead. Not sure if he's going to join the corner here. Just again to the attacking half. He'll stay right there at midfield. Cross to the edge of the box. Cleared away. Shot from Jace Palumbo on the ground. It's deflected by an Irish player, but doesn't go toward net. Merluse now gets it <laughs> at midfield, and he'll just play it toward the corner. Good job staying calm and collected by the sophomore keeper. I'll tell you, a little gamble there. He's <laughs> barreling down on him was Derek Monahan. Yeah, you have a missed kick or something. And a foul from Bola Morris there. Oh, he's coming up to join the yeah, offense Marlouche now. Marlouche is Marlouche, yeah. Really pushing forward now. Still the last Notre Dame player, but he's fully into the attacking half now. Yeah, he is. About 35 yards out. We'll see if they play it back to him here. Free kick on the far side, two minutes left to go. Cross in for Notre Dame. Had it toward goal, and Tchaikovsky's right oh. there. He'll collect. Who headed that? Did you see? Uh, I didn't make out who it, it was. It looked like it was. Here he, here he comes now, right? The guy with the curly hair. Yeah, I think that's O'Rourke. Uh, yeah, Caden O'Rourke. Yeah, O'Rourke. Uh, the freshman. This one boomed up in the air right into the sun. Knocked away by Notre Dame, and it'll roll out. For a Steiner throw in right in front of the Notre Dame bench. The Spartans in no rush to take this one. Under 90 Ooh. seconds left to go in regulation. Steiner leads it 1 0 off a goal from Matt Tafro. Or excuse me, Tyler Tafro. Assisted from Matt Tafro. Morris just came on a couple of minutes ago. Trying to play it to the corner, but he loses it. And Notre Dame will play it out from a throw in all the way back in their defensive third. Snyder trying to keep him bottled up. Whistle goes, foul on Snyder. It'll be a free kick. One last push for the Irish. For Notre Dame. Under a minute left to play. Punch forward by Baricelli. Didn't get a lot on that, though, as he slipped. Jace Palumbo now not going toward it as some miscommunication with his teammates. And now racing ahead is Peyton Breyer putting pressure on the keeper, Merluse, who plays it ahead. Flicked off of Riley, back across oh. the box. Still on the ground, and Tchaikovsky is able to get it. Looked like that was Lynch, right? He got, the, got it on Lynch's foot. Yeah, wearing the pink cleats is Will Lynch. It's almost out of nothing. Notre Dame able to get it. And now Tchaikovsky with under 20 seconds left to go. He'll boot it forward. They flick it back to Merluse, who will collect. 10 seconds left to go. He'll punt it forward. Last chance for Notre Dame, six seconds left on the clock. Flicked ahead by Honish, knocked away by Jacob Riley, and that'll do it, and what a win for the Steiner Spartans. It sure was, oh man. As a couple of Irish players go down to the ground in disbelief that they lost this one. Well, I tell you what, Notre Steiner's defense has been good all year, and they came up against an offensive juggernaut today. Did an absolute tremendous job, and. After they got down by the goal, Notre Dame had three really good opportunities in the last five minutes. Hanish and O'Rourke and Lynch, but uh, Chakowsky was equal to the task, and uh, Steiner's walking out of here with a huge win. Yeah, massive, massive win for so the Steiner I'm gonna go, bud. All right, Fish. Always a pleasure, my friend. 9-2, or excuse me, 10-2 and 3 now go the Steiner Spartans for their fifth CVC win of the year, or colonial win of the year, I should say. Notre Dame. Drops to 12 and 5. And what a win for the Steinert Spartans. So they're able to break this skid here. They had one win in their last four games coming into this contest. And they were able to secure the victory. Their second straight over Notre Dame. And a tough loss for the Irish, who looked like the better team throughout most of this contest. But Steinert able to grab that goal. It's the Tafro brothers, Matt to Tyler for the game winner and the only goal in this one for the 1-0 win for the Steiner Spartans, and that'll do it for us here on the WBCB Sports Network. A shout-out to our sponsors making this live stream possible, Capital Health System, Holden Ford Subaru, Revere Restaurant and Trade, Salt Funeral Homes, New Jersey Education Association, Notre Dame High School, the Hamilton Township Education Association, Italian People's Bakery, Hamilton Township Division of Health, Hyundai of Trenton, and, of course, the Trentonian. If you miss any of today's action, don't forget you can read it all about it in tomorrow's edition of the Trentonian. If you're complete local and national news seven days a week, it's the Trentonian or online at trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's the Trentonian. For our cameraman, Nick Gallagher, and our video engineer, Brianne O'Neill, 
And our color man, Rich Fisher, I'm Andrew Myers. Telling you to take care after this one. And thanks for tuning in to the WBCB Sports Network. Once again, your final score, 1-0 Steinert over Notre Dame. Have a good day, everybody.